What's up everyone? I'm Matt with Ozark Overland Adventures and Kara and I are here with Epic Family Road Trip. We are about to do the El Camino del Diablo or the Camino Puerto? Puerto? Muerto. Muerto. Camino Muerto, uh, which means what? Probably. <laughs> uh, but it translates to the Devil's Highway or the Road of Death. This is a historic route across southern Arizona uh, to get to California, and we are pumped to share this experience uh, with Pete and Carol and Peter and Dan, and it's gonna be awesome. Apparently Lando's got the route and he's leading the way. Yeah, they, they, they put it in his wallet. <laughs> it beeps whenever he's supposed to go right. <laughs> I love the view. I do too. I like Lando leading. It's so cool. This is probably the most technical part of this whole trail. You're welcome. <laughs> For me making the wrong turn. Kara started driving it on the at the beginning of the trip. And the first intersection took a left it when she should have taken a right. But it said you saw my Gaia and it looked like I was going the right way. I don't know. Yes, you I was did. looking at my Gaia. Saw it. Yeah. Um, so now we're, we're, we're already off the trail. There, we're not, we're on a <laughs> We're on a trail. Yeah, we're still on we're Not a trail. on the official El Camino del Diablo trail. No. But we are super pumped to be doing this trail over the next three, four, three, three nights, four, whatever, yeah. Kind of three and a half days. Uh, we're just going to take our time and yeah. there's so much history along this trail. Going west to east, this starts in the something uh, Department of Defense miss, miss bombing range. I think bombing range. Hello, so buddy. there is potential to find unexploded ordnance out here. Hopefully Lando doesn't. It, uh, it's the Barry M. Goldwater Barry range. M. Goldwater. If you would like to know that, you yes. can fact check with me. Thank you. <laughs> My fact checkers have uh, confirmed. <laughs> But yeah, so there's apparently unexploded ordnance out here. Not, the, not, all, not too much. All kinds, of, all kinds of fun stuff. That's that near the find. mine. Is it? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was anywhere. Nope. Okay, I was hoping Lando didn't, you know, step on a, no. step on a bomb. <laughs> you may want to let them know about that. <laughs> I will say, it has been quite neat being able to follow Lando because we've seen him running in all of his videos. <laughs> to have him actually lead us has been pretty cool. That's pretty special. And Peter and Carol also wanted to test their suspension out. So, again, y'all are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> As I'm getting knocked aside by side. And it's real kind of, also, it's also pretty interesting to see Lando running up ahead. Meanwhile, we have oh. Princess Fuzzy Butt in the back in her Sleepy. bed <laughs> asleep. <laughs> They're bred for different purposes. It is. It's totally different. She's the best little hiking Frenchie you'll ever do see.
So, apparently, fact check me here. Yeah. <laughs> El Camino de El Diablo, or the Devil's Highway, or the Road of Death. I like the Road of Death better. Sounds more ominous. Because it was. It was. Um, dates back to the 1700s and was a prominent road to cut across southern Arizona to California. And because of the intense heat of the summertime, uh, lots of people, like lots of Over people, 2, have died on this road. Over 2,000. Over 2,000. Mm -hmm. I thought it was more than that. Um, all, all, I think mostly walking the road. I don't, I don't think yeah, there's been. Years, there's a lot of immigrants. Yeah, a lot of immigrants making the path. Um, uh, and, and it gets really, really hot here in the summertime. But it's just, it, it, it's cool to think that we are on a road that has been around for hundreds of years. There's a lot of history. There's actually one guy who, it's kind of sad, but it's also kind of funny. He, he died and he was found with his face down in a puddle. And so he's like the only person that's died out here with too much water. Because he drowned. Wow. Yeah. Well, we've only been on the trail for a few hours, and we're currently heading to where we hope to camp for the night but you definitely get the sense that you are all alone out here because we've encountered no traffic, no, no signs of any other person in this area. It just kind of makes you wonder what it was like crossing this a long time ago on foot and how isolating it must have felt. We're nearing the mine that we hope to camp nearby, but this is right before it. And it is, it's a hole. It is a hole in the earth. Huh. It's like they started to, to maybe make a mine and just got 10 feet in and like, you know, I'm thinking not. Yeah, I don't know exactly how this would naturally occur. I don't either. Unless somebody was just having fun one day, or maybe it is the start of a mine, I don't know. Maybe back when the people were using this to, you know, to travel across on foot and stuff, they dug this out as a shelter. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like a beauty spot. I think it's great. Gonna Let's do it. Well, I think we found camp for the night. Gorgeous sunset through the ridge line over there. Beautiful views up here. Uh, the mine is just over there. There's some informational uh, kiosk over there. There's uh, a reservoir that uh, stone walls up there. There's a, a water collector. So if we don't walk up there tonight, we're definitely going to do that in the morning because I want to go check that out. Um, I think this is going to be awesome. Lots of these little remnants makes you wonder what this was. This is way cool. There's a sign. Throw one out. Oh, yep, there it is. Look what I found. This is your log. We know anybody in there? Um, no. No. Not on. Not that I know of yet. I think people are from Canada. Cool. Maybe Peter and Carol know. Man, that is one massive hole.
Wow, that's crazy. They apparently got lucky with that initial gold deposit found and managed to drill one big shaft that brought in a crap ton of gold. And then when that dried up after about 800 feet, they drilled several more shafts trying to, to relocate the, the gold deposit, the gold vein, and were unsuccessful. So they, they just, they got lucky with the one and couldn't find, couldn't find it anywhere else. Oh I'll my gosh, in. what are you making in here? Little I'm, crostinis? Uh, yeah. With so, herb cheese? Yeah, and some parmesan. Oh my, and, that is uh, so I'm awesome. I'm just kind of crisping up the parmesan. Obviously, I just put these ones in, and then I'm making some kale soup in here. Oh, that was good. Yeah, it is um, our family's favorite soup. So we make it all the time because it's so simple. But yeah, this I, is our... Uh, I, I like seeing the kitchen on the road. <laughs> this is nice. Yeah, this is amazing. This is kind of a game changer for us um, being on the road all the time. So we have our office here, our coffee, and everything else just kind of in its spot. But yeah, we're, we're really loving it, and we're so thankful to have you guys here and uh, hitting the trails for a few days. I'm so glad just to hang out with you all <laughs> in the next four days. It's going to be a blast. So really, really thankful it worked out. Me too. I think that's why it's been so hard to make a recipe book is because like every time we make it we it's different because you use what you have in the fridge but mm -hmm. I'm like oh but this is kind of like it yeah right, mm -hmm. right. <laughs> so is this sausage or is it yeah. ground beef so normally I do one ground beef and one right. sausage mm -hmm. like for this group yeah um but I had to do two hot sausages um I just like hot mm -hmm. but normally I would mix it with a beef but okay. they froze on the way here, so nothing was thawed. Oh. <laughs> so then I compromised. Good morning. morning. What an incredibly peaceful night to sleep. It's just so calm here. Wanted to do a little morning climb up to the top of this little spot where the mine was, at least part of the mine. Sun's just starting to come up over there. Love how it's already creating light and shadows on that rock face over there. Uh, in the distance, I don't know if you can see it as zoomed out as I am, but that mountain range in the distance, that is that, that is in Mexico. So I can't imagine what it was like living out here, working in the mine, especially in the summertime. If it was in the wintertime, it'd probably be a pretty decent life. But gosh, in the summertime out here, getting like 120 plus degrees, no thank you. This, this flat area here, this is where the town was. It's just it's pretty cool. There's so much history on this trail. I can't wait to, to continue on after we pack up and maybe get a little breakfast. It's going to be a good day. It's crazy how many trails there are out here to explore. I'm looking at the Gaia Overland layer. There's where we're, we're camped. Um, we're going to take this trail out and connect to the, the green trail here. 
Um, but oh, there's trails that go like through the mountains. I would love to take that trail, but not on the agenda today. Uh, but there's just, there's a lot. Good morning, Lando. Good morning. He's, he's uh, looking at all the steak in here. Uh-huh, I bet. <laughs> Rooster one's up there so bad. You want a rock monster? Yeah. Yeah? Come on. You can do it. Come on. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Aww. Okay, I'll come out. How about oh, no, we, we can well, we have just had a relaxing time around camp this morning. It is just after 10 a.m. Uh, so we're about to roll out, but first order of business is to go check out and see what that, uh, it's called a reservoir on the map. We're gonna, we're gonna go see what that is. I was really hoping to find water in here. I know. Dang. The well is dry. Swim by tonight, we'll swim right <laughs> If it was full, I'd consider jumping in. Have a nice little diving platform up there and you could just have fun after working all day in the mines. Oh, wow. It's pretty cool. I guess they use this water. To wash the rock or? I don't know. Me neither. I'd use it as a swimming pool. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Possible exaggeration. <laughs> <laughs> We're off and I am super pumped to see what we find today. Yeah, um, we got to see all of the landmarks that I have. Yeah, we did. We downloaded the route from uh, trailsoffroad.com. A lot of waypoints and stuff are marked in that. We also downloaded a version from Overland Trail Guides. And so I got lots of points of interest and stuff. And I think the one I'm most excited about I think will be our next stop and it's a series of are they water tanks water wells mm -hmm. um, yeah they're teenagers atlas it means um, the atlas. tanks. yeah that um, so there's like eight tanks that and by tanks i mean natural rock formations that are so deep that they can hold a lot of water and so travelers would try to go and that's how they would get their water supply and then Several people died at a lower level tank because there are different heights and they would die at a lower tank whenever they were 500 feet from the next tank that may have water. Bad luck, man. Bad day. Bad day. That's not going to happen to us. Nope. We got, we got plenty of water. Lando is just loving this. He's just running and running and running all over the place.
Well, that's uh, definitely interesting. Just seeing the signs for driving in an area with unexploded ordnance. Is that like a mine? Laser range in use. I just I, I, apparently they know not to bomb the road, but I wonder, like, could you be driving on this road and all of a sudden there's missiles being tested and exploded over by the mountains or out in the distance in the desert? I've seen some pictures or someone said that they've seen like dust like you know like maybe dummy rounds just for practice yeah. and, hmm, I don't know but after we got out of the mountains those signs are everywhere yeah Lando is no longer running <laughs> poor Lando he's, he's whining the whole time I bet he's he is. not happy <laughs> There's a, a, a wild desert Dan. Forgot he was with us. <laughs> this looks more different than anything that we've seen. There's a lot more green shrubs. There's a lot of green shrubs. It's like we moved to an oasis. They got even flowers. I know, this is way cool. I mean, this is something like this desert is totally different than Enzo Borrego. Oh, and I just love seeing all the new things. I'm very upset. I saw this from the road and thought maybe this was part of some unexploded ordnance, but it's just a ground stick. Very lame. It's like a cactus farm. Oh, this ended up being a nice little spot for lunch. I, I am glad we had the awnings. Uh, if, if you, I, I think if you're gonna spend time in the desert, you, an awning is a must. You, you don't use them very often, but when you need them, they come in real handy. So really, really glad to have them. Um, we are not far from the Akatia Wells, the, the, the water tanks. Um, we just got to skirt the edge of these mountains. I think we cut in between those two and it's on the back side. So we're not far. And then after that, we actually leave the, um, the DOD area uh, bombing range place and get into, uh, get into different land uh, without risk of, you know, getting bombs dropped on you. I bet Dan had a blast jumping these on the bike. Oh, 
Hold on. We're at an area that's known as the Tanijas, something atlas, or also called the high tanks. And there's a series of water collection pools up in that little smooth V-shaped wash that the travelers doing the El Camino del Diablo would come here for water and apparently you know some of the lower basins would be empty but the upper ones would have water and people would actually die in between getting from one to the other just for pure dehydration so we're gonna go check them out well this definitely gets more water than the surrounding areas because there's actually trees here Definitely a good sign for water. Reacher's little legs are getting tired trying to walk in the sand. Well, I found one pool. Look at that. Yeah. You got that from there? Yeah. I just scooped that out. It's Is... probably better than the Uncle Tina's. <laughs> yeah. Uh, probably. Yeah, what do you think? Was it good, Lando? I mean, uh, oops, that's like, oh, that's nice and cool. Wow. That's awesome. You can see up there, there's water coming out from that. Like, there's a big one. Would there be a pool up there? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Oh, wow. Whoa. That's way cool. You can swim in that one. Crazy. Looks a little murkier than that other one. I wonder if this stuff down there is clear. That's what I was about to say. I bet it's filtered through the sand. Wow. Can you imagine this after a rain, just seeing it come through here? I bet there's beautiful waterfalls. Still trickling down there. It, yeah, here is. Yeah, this is a lot colder than a, that last one. That is real cold. And can you imagine being on like the verge of dehydration though, and then you come up here? And you find this ice cold water. <laughs> Our life straw, I wouldn't mind. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I'll take this back and filter it or something. There you go. Man, that's a that's a rough climb. Yeah. Dan's finding a route. It's not so bad when you take it at an angle. Oh, yeah. Only one more up to the big one, Dan said. <laughs> oh, maybe. I'm just saying, I'll this out all we be. Wow. Made it down here to this one. God, this feels so good. God, that feels good. That's actually the closest thing I've had to a bath in four days. Man, look at the views from up here. I mean, if you're up in here dying of thirst, probably don't care about the views, but that's pretty incredible. Can you imagine this boulder just getting pummeled by water just occasionally and 
shape. This kind of looks like a big clam. You see where the water from this one seeps through there into that one, and that one flows into the big one. He's he's managing to kind of wedge himself down. I don't know. Yep. Whoa! 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 Well, I managed to find some gloves from a weary traveler that didn't make it. Huh. Huh. What size those are? Now it's going to be a race of who's going to get the It does slide okay. <laughs> now they're racing each other. <laughs> well, we already know who's won. <laughs> Well, none of us died. I don't know. We did better than this guy. I really, really wanted to jump in that water. Um, yeah, I don't know, Lando. I think we found the remains of whoever was wearing those gloves. All right, we made it down. And I got to say, the view from here... Looking at, at where we were, which is a little small boulder down there, um, we thought we were a lot higher up than we were. It felt a lot higher up than we were. It was still beautiful, but there's there's a lot more pools up there. That's crazy. Uh, but now we're just gonna hoof it and and push on and get to camp. After being up there, I can totally understand how someone just dying of dehydration, didn't get water in a bottom pool, and died getting up to the upper ones. Because yeah. that's a hard climb. Well, and not only that, like, it's a beautiful day. Imagine what it's like when it's like, those rocks are hot. 120 degrees? The yeah. rocks are hot. Uh-uh. Because, and they're, they're literally burning their hands trying to get to water. And they're so thirsty. Yeah. Yeah, and that is a very difficult climb. Especially going further up from where we were. Yeah, I didn't. You, I, I gotta don't we know how you got there. You had made it far, and then we got down, and we're like, oh. Yeah. You probably just made it to the first pool, the first real pool. No, well, the other ones counted. I don't think they would have really counted. I do too. No, I don't. Think I think so. we saw four pools. No. Yeah. If you count a puddle in the road, that's a pool. No, no. those were legit. Mm. Like drinkable and full of water, gallons and gallons of water. No, because the pools that they talk about, the tanks that they talk about, can hold twenty thousand. Well, there's those probably a bigger little, tire up. Those little ones cannot hold that much. So, no. Well, if I could fly a drone in this area, I would go see, but I can't. Nope. Wow, we're in the, we're in the um, saguaro cactus forest. Look at it. Look how long and straight this road goes in the distance. Yeah. That's awesome. Forever and ever and ever. Some of the weirdest stuff I've ever driven on. Dan's being crazy. Woo! Good job! Carol, like us, played it safe. Those are awesome shots. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I'm pretty waterproof, but not with these open. Oh no! Oh yeah, you had all yours. Whoopsie. Yeah, yeah, that was fun though. Yeah. I bet you're cool now. Yeah, they cooled me down. <laughs> well, that was the absolute last place I expected to see a big mud puddle. Now we know why all the cactuses along the road are like bigger. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. We, we did. He did so good at that. He did. He did awesome. We did not want to get the Jeep muddy since we're very close to camp.
this is the Circle 8 grave site. Apparently this is where eight travelers lost their lives and were buried here. It is. This road keeps seeming like, okay, it's flattened out, it's smoothed out, you can fly, and all of a sudden it just breaks away from you. Then you get back into deep sand, then you get in smooth gravel, and then you get into potholes. And this right here is really thick. Look at that little fence around the fence. I know. There was a tire around over here. <laughs> yeah. It was really thick to walk there back there. Like, it's, I can't imagine how he's bike in this. this yeah, because this is real deep stuff. This is really deep. Uh, we are almost to camp, but we just can't. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Uh, oh. Ravine. Yeah. Uh. We made it to camp. We did not make it here before dark. Uh, still got a nice little little peak of the sunset over there. Um, unfortunately, the little offshoot trails that went to the edge of the mountains were all closed, authorized use only, or horse and foot traffic only. So this is Chule Wells, T-H-U-L-E, um, campsite. So this is an official campsite. Uh, in the National Wildlife Refuge is home for the night. We're going to set up camp, we're going to eat some dinner, hang out with good friends, and it's going to be great. This looks awesome. I love your kitchen. Thank you. And what's uh, on the menu for tonight? Uh, just a real simple kind of steak hibachi. That sounds just delicious. going to cook some steak up in the skillet and got jasmine rice with a little soy sauce. Finish it with some yum yum sauce and super easy. It takes longer to cut the steak than it does to cook everything. That sounds like the perfect meal for this type of a day we just had. Like on the trail, doing a little bit of hiking, um, epic scenery, and then a delicious steak meal. Hope so. <laughs> That's the plan. I love it. Yum yum. Yeah, it's not, not there's, there's no spice it's to it. There's no heat to it. Well, everybody has gone to bed. And I'm just up finishing some work on this upcoming Friday's video. Um, but I'm going to cut this video off here because I think we've just had so much fun the last day and a half that if, if I keep going, it's just going to be a huge video. Um, we'll, we'll save that for later. Um, tomorrow, we've got another 65 miles of trail um, and lots of cool stuff on the El Camino del Diablo trail. Or I, I like the Camino Muerte, the, the road of death. Um, it, it's been so much fun today. So. Uh, if you would, please come back next week, subscribe, like, you know, all the YouTube love. Check out the Patreon links and the Shop Overland Apparel links in the description. Um, be sure and check out all of our sponsor links in the description if you need all kinds of stuff from them. And uh, we'll see you next week.